Hi guys, welcome to Peep Buffer Kingdom. This is episode 13. Yes, it can be done. We have 13 episodes on P. Puffer Fish. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. It's been done. We're doing it. So today the episode is about the hierarchies within a P. Puffer Fish group, the personalities within the group and how that affects one another. So it's a bit more of a nature type of video looking at the sort of natural habits of these fish and how they behave. So what we have here, as you can see, is live blood worms. Anyone who feeds live blood worms to their pea puffers will know that they actually die off quite quickly. A few will last about a week, maybe a handful, bunch. But by and large, you're going to have to pick a lot of the live ones out after the first day or two. So I've picked out the live ones here. You've got some big juicy ones, as you can see, smaller ones for the pea puffers. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop them in one by one. And then with that, we're going to see which puffer fish come first, which one's waiting, biding their time and uh, which ones will wait until the end. So once everyone leaves, they'll then come in for the worms. So let's get on with it and feed those puffs. Introducing the lineup for the feeding, we have BFP here, the big friendly puffer. She's the biggest puffer fish we got, that's a female. And here we have this little tiddly thing here. This is actually a male, and he's just so, showing the signs of the stripe recently. We've got the uh, larger male here, or two larger males. Oh, that's actually some territorial kind of thing there, facing off against each other. It's quite funny because they're so small and they try and make each other look big, make themselves look big rather. So you're seeing a bit of behaviour there, squaring up against each other. But it very rarely ends up in a bite, they're usually just showing off their size and then um, they'll go back to doing their own thing pretty quick. Ooh. Bit of aggression there. But yeah, you can see they just go on with it afterwards. So, let's get those blood worms in. Okay, so we have my pipettes already with a worm in. And we have the worms themselves. So I'm going to put the first worm in here. And we'll see which ones come to the top first. You can see this male's already wanting it. And he's got it. He's not shy. You can see the whole group here. Got this kind of pack mentality. I've got another big worm here. That is BFP, the biggest puffer fish getting it. She always does. She's she's very, very greedy. She'll eat so much. She's got a massive belly by the end of the feedings. And there's also a mini BFP, which is like a very similar version of her, but smaller, obviously. Again, there's BFP eating. So you're seeing she's quite dominant in this tank. Another worm going in, he's going to notice it, BFP again, oh no, mini BFP stolen off here. They're quite aggressive feeders actually, they'll really like just whip the worms out of each other's mouths. There's no manners amongst these guys. So, let's get another one in there. See if BFP, yeah it's always the larger puffers that are, that are really brave, so if I put one over here. Oof, going for it there. Occasionally they do catch each other, but I've never seen anything major. They kind of catch each other with a little bite, but there's never any marks or kind of, I suppose, scarring really. And that's usually overnight. Sometimes I've seen the males have marks on their back from what looks like a little bite. But it's quite rare. And again, BFP's got it. So you're seeing here in the hierarchy of these pea puffers, BFP is very, very dominant. Quite often the males are as well, the larger males, but today she's just extra hungry. And there's the tiniest one there getting it for herself, or his self rather. So whilst he's the smallest one, he's got quite a lot of guts actually. He's not scared of the larger puffers. BFP again going for it. Now one thing that you may not have noticed, this puffer, if I can get it here, here, Where is it? Yeah, this one right below my finger here, there. Uh, he's so shy. He'll always come up for uh, blood worms after everyone's got theirs. Very, very rare for him to kind of charge in and get his worms amongst the others. It's usually if I've been away for a couple of days and they're extra hungry. So I'll put in a few now at the same time. See how that goes down. 
one there, is it BFP, BFP Junior? It's got another one. These females are really dominant, actually, I have to say. And that's the one that doesn't usually get a worm until the end, just got one. This guy here managed to nab himself one. So he must be very hungry today. He's got another one there. We've been brave today. Been brave for the camera, getting chased for that worm as well. They're so aggressive, these guys, for eaters. They're like having mini piranhas almost. It's crazy. If I put one over here, so that someone else can get one. It's one of their males there. And you can tell because of their iridescent lines and everything. We've been through that before. And uh, this girl here... Where is it? Can I point? This one here. Top of my finger there. She's the smallest female, but she's got so much spunk about her. She'll just go for everything. She's not um, not shy at all. And she usually misses the first three chances of trying to go for food. So I called her Buddy from the film Elf with Will Ferrell because she's, she's so enthusiastic. But she misses the mark quite a lot. Bless her. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. You've probably not been able to pick it up. But when they bite into the live worms as well, it's a bit gross. You see the blood kind of coming out of their gills as well when they're chewing into them. It's a bit gross. But it's kind of cool. Absolute worm fest here. And in terms of these guys when they're schooling, they'll generally follow the females. I think I don't know if that's more of a mating thing rather than the females being the leaders of the group. But once they've got fully fed and they've got big round bellies, you're starting to see BFPs getting there um, towards the back of the tank there. She's coming a bit more forward. The big full bellies for meeting. Once they've got that, especially at night time, they'll school and follow each other around the tank. It's so cute. It's one of the best things you can see when you've got a group of puffer fish. And like I was saying, the uh, ratio here, I've got five males, it turns out, to three females, which isn't ideal at all. It's not that good, really. But given the size of my tank, it just seems to work. There is some aggression, as you've seen here, but it's usually a little bit during feeding and a little bit here and there. Uh, during the day, but because there's so much space in here, they get away really easy from each other. And it's not yet been a huge issue. If it will become a big issue, I'm going to have to get rid of one or two of the, probably the males. But the thing is, it's so hard to get yourself a female because you don't know if they're females until they're fully grown. So that can be very tricky. So I was going to pour the last few worms in all at once. And we'll see who gets what. BFP, the bigger males. They're just more aggressive, they really are. Let's see where they're all at. But they're still hungry. I've got some brine shrimp, which I may feed now as well. But I feel like they've probably had enough of the blood worms now. They usually get about five plus each. Well, I did see one. I think it's one of the males he was eating. Is it this one? I think it was this male once, he ate about 16 bloodworms, I'm not even exaggerating, about 16 bloodworms on his own. He would just sit at the top when I first bought him and just demolish everything that came into the tank. Here's the uh, big belly of BFP. Yeah, we're looking at you. We're looking at you, gorgeous. Going into the back, they're looking all shy. And now we're starting to see more of their natural behaviour now they've had their kind of feed. They're still loitering around looking for a... Let's take a seat down. Looking for any extra bits of food that are floating around. But there is no more left. You can see, even with the big bellies, they're still really, really hungry and they'll still pretty much munch anything. So you've got to try and get a handle of how much you're feeding them and not overfeeding them. Here again, you're seeing a bit of posturing between the males. I've actually seen some breeding behaviour as well from these guys, which is particularly interesting. So I'm hoping, I'd love to have little baby pea puffers. That'd be a great sort of series of videos to do, showing you the sort of growing of the eggs and then becoming the little fish. I've seen a few videos of people who have bred them. It's so interesting. 
And in general order tank, it's very peaceful in here. Going back to the hierarchy and the social structure of this group, the bigger puffers are obviously more confident, they're a bit more boisterous. The smaller puffers, I mean, you can't even see the smaller puffers at the moment. I think this guy, where's my hand? This guy here is one of the smaller ones. He's, he's got a few worms in him though, so that's good. You just have to keep an eye on him, because if you've got ones that are a bit, I don't want to say cowardly, but if they're more shy, and they don't really want to get stuck in so much, you really do have to make sure that they're getting fed, because it might not necessarily be that they're ill, it might actually just be that they're getting bullied out of the food. So you have to keep an eye on that, because the ones that are lower down the hierarchy in the group, you just have to take more attention and care with them. This is another one of the small guys. This one's actually not that shy when it comes to food. So this, guys, is the new snail tank. Massive improvement on the last tub that you'll see from my uh, earlier videos. I think it was about the third video maybe that I did about breeding snails for your puffer fish for food. These guys are pond snails in here. So you'll see there's a few in the corner here. They actually move pretty quick. And they've got all these like, nooks and crannies in the logs and the little bits of wood that they can breed in there as well. But uh, I wanted to get a shrimp tank. I wanted to get some cherry shrimp, but my girlfriend wanted to get a colourful fish in the study. So we've got these long, thin, white cloud minnows, which are really, really cute fish. But I'm still going to have to get some shrimp, I think. So I would love to get maybe four, five, six cherry shrimp in here to kind of brighten up the tank even more so. Uh, this is just a five-gallon tank. This is one I actually found on someone's doorstep that they were going to chuck out. It's really dirty. And uh, so I essentially just thought, well, they're going to throw it away. No point in then putting that to waste. So I picked it up, took it home, cleaned it up. Bought some sand, little bits of rocks, stones, um, and a plant, and did that myself. So I got this little filter, got this LED light. And now the snails have got a little mini paradise to breed in. I think with the filter, they're actually spending a lot less time out of the water. So obviously that helps them. Uh, water changes as well as usual. And yeah, I think this is a much bigger improvement for the pond snails. They're taking a while to breed because I put a whole bunch in the puff fish tank before I put a few in here. So I started off with about 10 pond snails in here, small ones. So it's taken a while for them to grow out. And then once they start breeding and getting to a decent-ish size, I'll start putting them in the pea puffer tank. So just going to show you, if you're trying to breed snails, you want to get a tank, you can get them free from, um, you know, websites, Facebook groups and all that kind of stuff. So don't feel like you have to spend out loads to get a little tank to breed your snails in or anything like that. This is exactly fine for them. Well guys, I hope that video was interesting for you. I know it's not the most exciting video that we've done so far, but I'm hoping that if someone wants to get a group of puffer fish, this is a good way to show you that if you've got a larger tank, it can work. And you've got, if anything, they're quite, they're scalding fish anyway, so it could work the more you have. And the more you have, the less aggression you're going to have. When I had six pea puffers, there's actually a lot more aggression in here than when I had eight. So I'm hoping this is more interesting and uh, helpful for people who are looking to get maybe a, a group of pea puffers of five, six, seven, eight or more. And then uh, the space that they'll need to make sure they're happy, particularly if you've got more males like I have than females, which isn't ideal. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment as well if you want to see a particular video that I haven't done yet. This is the 13th episode, obviously. So uh, needing more ideas for sure. Well, guys, hope you have a great week and you've enjoyed this episode about hierarchy and social behaviours and eating behaviours and pecking order of pea puffers.